Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Florence, Italy. Today we are going to be sculpting on a budget. The idea is that I want to show you how I started out sculpting. How I practiced in my small apartment bedroom in Oslo long before I had my own studio and long before I ever came to Florence. I want to show you that you can do this essentially with minimal resources and practice and build up a portfolio that you can use to apply for whatever art educational institution you're dreaming of attending. So I've set up a setup that more or less matches what I had in my bedroom. A small desk and an office chair from Ikea. All things considered, this is a pretty accurate representation with the exception of the surrounding studio, of course. You'll have to imagine that I'm in a bedroom. Before any sculpting can be done, we need to make an armature, obviously, and I'll show you how I used to make armatures that allowed me to make sculptures that looked good and photographed well without the need of creating a mold and a cast, and without armature wire sticking out of butts or heads, spoiling the effect of a finished sculpture. This is the materials we'll be using for making the armature laid out in front of us on the table here. We have aluminum armature wire in three different gauges. We have a cordless drill, some needle nose pliers, a side cutter, and a really nice heavy duty Lacey Susan that I've actually had since I started sculpting. If you stick around until the next episode in the series where we will sculpt, I'll tell you a funny story about this Lacey Susan. Because we are trying to make something we can use as a portfolio piece, potentially at least, so we can apply it to our favorite art school, the Florence Academy of Art for example, we'll make sure the piece presents well. We're in our bedroom here, there's no room to make a mold, so we need to present the clay piece as best we can. Painting the base a uniform black goes a long way. In this case, the base is just a simple piece of wood. You can use a nicer resin plinth if you have one, or you can go to a hardware store and buy one of those wooden pieces meant to sit atop a pole and a fence. I think they're called crown pieces or perhaps cap pieces. A lot of times they will have some pretty nice designs and look really good as makeshift bases. Here I'm just using a simple cutter from a wooden plank. I painted it with black acrylic paint. A black base will photograph really well, which is important for me here. Make sure you not only paint the top, but also the, the edges. Once that's done, we'll leave the base to dry while we make the armature. The wire we'll be using is 1 8 inch and 3 16 inch or 3.17 millimeters and 4.76 millimeters. If you're in Europe, you can find aluminum armature wire online at taranti.co.uk. There's a link in the description below. And if you're in the US, you can go to completesculptor.com. Sometimes you can find it at hobby or art supply stores as well, though this can be a little bit rare. The reason we use aluminum is because it is a dead metal, which means it doesn't have any spring to it, essentially. If you bend it, it'll stay the way you bent it. I have this little cheat sheet with me today. This is very similar to what I used when I did this in my bedroom actually. It's a quick and easy guide and it helps me work out some of the proportions and ensure we don't make an armature that's completely useless. If you just Google proportional diagrams, a lot of these should pop up. You can import them to Photoshop and scale them up or down to whatever size sculpture you wanna make. Mine is around 20 centimeters or eight inches tall which is what our sculpture will be as well. So to begin with, I'll cut off a generous piece of wire. As you can see, it's looped at the top and way longer than what I'll need, or at least so it seems, but this will all make sense in a second. I line it up with my cheat sheet and grab the wire, making sure there's plenty of wire extending below the feet, which I'll need for the hips and to attach the wire into the base. Then I twist the wire tightly together, making the twisted section of the wire about as long as the torso. I compare on my cheat sheet to make sure I've more or less nailed the proportions. I don't want the twisted section to extend any further than the pit of the neck, which is where the, your two clavicles meet and where your neck begins, at the top of the rib cage. Once 
Then I cut the loop section at the top. This is going to turn into my arms very, very soon. Let's thank today's sponsors, my Patreon supporters on Patreon who have ensured the continued existence of this channel and allowed me to upgrade my gear bit by bit, making better looking and better sounding content for all of you watching. If you are interested in supporting the channel or perhaps interested in getting personal feedback on your sculptures from me, then Patreon is the place for you. You'll get in-depth feedback on techniques and how you can apply them to your own work. Anything sculpture related goes, we can talk about armature, supplies, mold making, anything you need help with in your sculpting endeavors. So check it out, there's a link in the description below. I bend the width of the shoulders into the formerly looped section of the wire and I bend the width of the hips into the leg section. And voila, we have a little stick figure man and this is the basis for our armature. This little stick figure man was made with 1 8 inch armature wire or 3.17 millimeters. And the problem right now is that our legs are too thin to support the weight of the clay once we start sculpting. And the result will be a very very wobbly sculpture that's a nightmare to work on and that could collapse under its own weight. So we need to reinforce the legs. We'll do that with the 3 16 inch or 4.76 millimeter wire. And it's fairly simple, I just make a copy of the legs I've already made using the thicker armature wire. There are many ways that you could reinforce a piece like this, but this is pretty much the easiest way I think, and that leaves you, and it also leaves you with no armature wire sticking out of the buttocks or the head. It'll photograph and present well as a finished piece without the need for mold making and casting. The thicker wire needs to be added to the rest of our armature and the easiest way to do this is with thin wrapping wire. You don't need aluminum wire for this, I happen to have it, but it's not necessary at all. Any thin wire will do really. Wrap the wire tightly around the two pieces to hold them together. And if you wrap tightly enough, there will be no need for any glue at all. They will be more than strong enough and be held together very well. The only issue with this technique is that your legs, and especially your ankles, end up being potentially a little bit thick. I'll run into this whenever I start sculpting and we'll discuss some potential fixes to make life a little easier for us. We obviously don't want our sculpture to have cankles. One of the things that make an elegant and natural looking sculpture is the tapering of the limbs from thick at the top, or closer to the center of the body, to thin towards the extremities. And if we can't achieve that because of the armature wire, that's not a good thing. So with every solution comes some sacrifices. In this case, we got rid of any external armature, but we pay for it by having leg armatures that might be a little bit thicker than what we'd prefer. The arms will also need the same wrapping wire as the clay needs something to grab onto. Otherwise, it'll slide around on our armature, making working on it more of a pain than it needs to be. The twisted torso section doesn't need wrapping wire as the clay will grab well on to the twisted wires. And that's it, one simple human armature built. We don't need armature for the head at this scale. The clay will be able to support itself and the weight of the head with no problem. In the past, I have stuck a small piece of armature wire into the clay around the neck once I've started sculpting as a support for the head, and that works well enough if you really feel like you need to have an armature. So now the armature only needs to be attached to the wooden base. Here is something to note by the way, I should have planned out the pose before this and posed the armature properly and somewhat accurately before attaching it to the base. Because the legs are stuck to the base here, we have limited options for bending the wire into the pose that we want. We'll discuss this more in the next part about sculpting however. Just know that it's a smart idea to post the armature wire close to what you want before gluing it into the base. 
glue the armature into the base, I'll need holes to glue it into first. And the holes are drilled into the base using my cordless drill. Now this drill bit, as you can see, is a little overkill, but I had it and I haven't had an opportunity to use it yet. And so this was a fine opportunity and I took my chance. I ended up almost drilling straight through the base, which is fine, but there's no reason to do it as the only thing that comes of it is that the glue leaks out at the bottom. But if you pay close attention, you'll notice that I'll have a trick for this as well. With the holes drilled, I make sure the armature is going to fit. A snug fit is preferable for sure as it, along with the glue, will help hold the armature in place while we sculpt. It's very annoying if the armature gets worked loose while we're working. And it can also be a little bit difficult to fix, depending on what stage of the sculpture you're at. We could use something simple like super glue, but we have our goal set on a career as a sculptor here. And so we're gonna bring out the big boy glue, which is two part epoxy glue. It works very straightforward. You simply squeeze out two similar beads or blobs out of the tube on a piece of paper and you mix it together very well. If you have different amounts of the two components, you run the risk of it never setting up and staying gummy and gooey forever. And the same can happen if you don't mix it properly. Sometimes beginning to squeeze out a little until both tubes are relieving themselves of their contents equally and then squeezing out the desired amount you want to mix somewhere else on the paper can be a good trick to ensure you get a proper mix ratio. I mix it together with the back of an old brush, any, any sort of simple tool would do for this of course, and I mix for around a minute I think before picking it up and drooping it into the two holes that we drilled. Once the holes are filled with epoxy, I push the armature into the holes all the way to the bottom, letting the glue seep into every crease and crevasse. I ended up mixing a little less than ideal here, so I quickly mixed up some more and pushed it around where the armature seats into the base. Now we let the epoxy set up. It is five minute epoxy, but over here it's the end of the day and so I'm gonna go home and wait until tomorrow, when I will begin sculpting, which will be next Thursday for you. If you enjoyed the video and want to learn sculpture, check out my Patreon page. I give feedback and critiques on people's work and we talk about whatever you need help with in your sculpting endeavors. And right now, there is exclusive sculpting content on my Patreon. The first series we are embarking on is the Beginner's Guide to Figure Sculpture. I'm super excited to finally be creating exclusive content for Patreon, and I hope you will be too, and we'll take a look. The link to my Patreon is in the description below. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for a new video next Thursday. Hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever a new video comes out. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button and share it with your friends and family. It helps me out a lot. Thank you for watching, stay creative, and I hope to see you in the next one.